All right, I got these two uh, Lionel 500 series cars, this box car, and you can see it's quite filthy with just ground in dirt from years of sitting. And then I have this uh, hopper car, and on here you can see the end where this is flaking. This is because this car was dipped when they painted it, and it was sitting like this when it dried. And the paint pulls up down here along this edge, then later as time goes by it flakes off because it's so deep. But anyway, this looks like a really nice car other than these paint flakes right here, a little rust on this. But otherwise it will clean up to be a nice car. Now the first thing with the, when you wash train cars is you never put soap or any kind of cleaning agent on a dry car. So what I have here is I have, this is a sink, it's filled with warm water. I'll put some more in there, get the temperature up while I take these off. There's no gold in there. All right, and then you just take the whole car and make sure it's good and wet. All right, this car has the data on it. So I don't want to spend any effort scouring in this area because it will ruin it. Uh, so basically, with a car like this, I'm just going to use, this is uh, just regular Comet cleanser. And I put some of this in over here on this side. And I take a wet toothbrush and I dab it into the cleanser. Take a car like this. And then I rub along here like this. Not too much where the uh, lettering is, but just work right along. I have my rag here so I can hold the car on this beam of the sink. And then I just work my way across very gently with this because I don't want to damage the lettering again. And the same thing with where this flaking is and I can just rub it pretty much anywhere in there trying to get the dirt out shove it in there rinse it and that's part of it too is that you keep rinsing the soap off because if you leave the soap on the soap will etch because it will leave cleaner areas and you just work your way around the car like this. If you scrub too hard, you'll end up with bare metal or really thin paint. So you really don't want to do much. You just really want to loosen up the dirt without damaging the paint. And that's something that if you do it enough, you'll learn how to do it. Right, and the cleanser, I think that bottle of cleanser was a dollar, so it's not really even worth trying not to waste the cleanser. All right, and this, I'm gonna put these uh, back on, so I don't really need to clean inside. And you take this. Now, one of the things, that you do with these tin plate cars is you take your oven and you can turn your oven on to preheat at 200 degrees and you set the oven at 200 degrees and then you just put the car in after you shake it really well and when you're done cleaning it and you scrub it real well and then you'll rinse it um, and then you you put the car in the oven and it'll dry the car and then we'll wax it and I'll show you all those steps with these two cars all right see I got some flaking paint up in here that's again it's the car hanging like this when it was dipped so the paint's flaking down in this end, whereas if you look at this end, the paint's okay. This car's gonna look pretty good. Then I wanna rinse the car off good. Just 
rinse all that paint with all that soap. And there it is. So this ship much better. I'm going to want to take this and just take it outside and shake it really good. So all the water's out. Um, these I'll wash real quick. You can use your, your kitchen sponge. You probably don't want to use the kitchen sponge dry. Or you actually never want to use the kitchen sponge dry or any kind of scotch brights. But if it's wet, you can use it. These, it won't hurt. For the sides of cars where you got thinner paint, you should probably avoid doing this unless it's really filthy. Avoid using this. Look at this car. This car is filthy. Cool. Let me do this real quick. Mm -hmm. Alright, I took this car outside, shook it to shake off as much water as I can get, and I'm going to wipe it down with the dry towel to get more water off it. The towel actually helps to pick up any dirt that we left or missed. <clears throat> and again, this car has lettering rubber stamped on the side, so I don't want to do anything too heavy with it. And then I'm going to just put it in the oven. At up to 200 degrees. As soon as the oven gets to 200 degrees, I'll turn the oven off. And now the oven's at 200 degrees. And I just put the cars and the stuff in there, and that'll dry the rest of the water off. And then I'll come back and wax them, and I'll show you that stuff. Well, let me, and I'll do this box car, which should be a great example. All right, look at this box car, which also came with the. The hopper car that I just did. This has got just a film of dirt on here. Very thickly all through here. The roof has got quite a bit of it. it looks like a scratch there from poor treatment. Just ground in. There's fingerprints down on this end. It's just a terrible looking car. You know? But I think that this car will clean up enough that I can put it on the lap and run it and actually enjoy having it. So we'll get it in here and again, first thing you do is get the car wet. And that's what this water is. This is just water with some soap in it to get the car wet. And this is a heavily dirty car, but look, we can see already the water is, just the water and the soap in here is removing a lot of that dirt. We're loosening it up. So what I want to do is I want to put more of my cleanser here. I used to put the cleanser on here, but this sink is smaller, so it won't sit there. Uh, I'm going to take the paintbrush, kind of dry, or toothbrush, and then I just rub it. Can you see that? Work my way across. Kind of like the, the woman at the dentist does when she's cleaning my teeth. She goes around and does each tooth. and works in a system so that there's no missed teeth. And with this, because this is a light color, I want to go real quick, lots of rinses. I don't want to leave any soap on this light color. And you can already see the difference between where I've cleaned and where I have it in this. Alright, because the light colors are very susceptible to just coming off when you're trying to clean them. So you want to either not do it at all. Post-war car, like a milk car, if you get it wet, the paint will come right off and you're done. Same thing with the little two-dome tank cars. 
All right, there's still a little dirt in here. But that's looking much better than what it did look like when we started. There's still some in there. All right, now I'm gonna do the roof. I should have started on the roof because I might have dirt flow down into the car side that I just did when I do the roof. So I should have probably started at the top. We'll just do that. This. this is just a, a soft toothbrush. It's not a heavy or medium, it's a soft toothbrush. Oh. You know, and this one, oh, this was for my dentist. But with this toothbrush, you get the toothbrushes at the dollar store. You can buy a handful of them, use them, and then throw them out. Don't try to make them last forever. So you can see that, that I'm removing the pain in this area around that, which is very difficult not to get to get this area clean without removing too much of it, because it's actually removing a bit of the pain. But see, this car looks a lot better. This kind of stuff right here, the wax will cover that. So that'll fill in. That car looks a lot better. Look at the end. See that? There, there, and you just keep working at it. All right now, when I clean the cars, I never do any kind of polishing on the plates because the plates have a nice patina on them, and they also have a lacquer or something that Lionel put on. Them. So if you clean them, you're going to clean off the Lionel lacquer and you'll scuff it all up and it'll take decades to get back to looking nice like that. So with the trim, I never do more than just clean it like I'm doing here. Because um, I think that these are old trains. This box car right here with this oil label, the 10 series truck and the two piece brake wheel, this dates to no later than 1932, 33. So, it's 90 years old. It should kind of look like it's 90 years old. Let me get this side done real quick. show you how much of this work is the cleanser. Here's some cleanser on my finger. That's just a dab right there. No friction, nothing. Just a dab with my finger and see what it's done. So when you're actually using the cleanser with a real soft toothbrush, it's quick. It cleans. And the idea is to get it done quickly and not do too hard. You push too hard, you spend too much time on it, you'll remove all the paint.
All right, I'm gonna take this outside, shake it off real good. When you wipe the drain with the towel, you want a clean towel. See this towel? I never use this towel when I'm cleaning or working on stuff because I don't want to have solder fragments or metal pieces in it that'll cause scratching. It's just, this is just a fresh towel. It's clean. It's not a good one. It's an old one, but it's still, it's not something that's used been laying around in the garage where it has dirt or grunt grit in it. So I wipe off as much of this dirt as I can. If you can see that with the towel. The car looks better already. Now it looks dull, but we'll put wax on it and I'll show you that next. Here's the hopper car. It's coming, it's pretty much dry. But I'm gonna give them some time in there and then I'll come back to it. Okay, the trains are all dry, and at this point I'm gonna wax them. And I use this Howard's Feeding Wax right here. I've been using this for over 35 years. A little bottle like this is about 10 bucks. The antique stores carry them. Maybe you could buy it online. Um, so let's pull one of these cars out. This is the hopper car. Look how much cleaner that is. Right now you can already see because I've touched this wax what's happening. Now what I want to do with the wax just put a little bit on and I have this it's a really soft bristle brush. Right and these bristles help get into everything. See how that is just bringing it right up. You don't have to put a lot on. This is a liquid wax which means it does not need to be buffed afterwards. You just put it on, then wipe it off so it's dry. And then it's on there. It doesn't dry and become white like the paste wax. And in fact, with this, if you had a car that you didn't need to wash, you could use this to take the paste wax. If there was little bits of paste wax down in there, you just work the wax in with this. And this car cleaned up really well. And you wipe the wax in. You don't need that much, just a little bit. And you can just see how beautiful this car looks now. Right from a car that somebody would have repainted that car as filthy as it was. Now it's a nice looking car. I can take my clean cloth and wipe it a little bit so that it doesn't give you greasy fingerprints. It's not even touched up right here, huh? Yeah. Oh, looks like a touch up right here. And wipe it down a little bit. And that car looks really nice. Just like that. Alright. These. 
They used to have stuff called wax and grease remover that you could buy at the automotive paint shop that was really good for wiping the cars down if you had paste wax on them. But the Environmental Protection Agency doesn't like it evaporating. So where I live, I can't get it anymore. Now see, this is rusty right here. But if I work some of this wax in here, it'll probably dull down some of that rust. Okay. And this is another soft bristle toothbrush, and it's clean. I don't want to do too much because I don't want the shiny bare metal. I just want that in, and I'll work that in, wipe it down a little bit. Put that in there. And now it's ready for another 90 years of sitting around. I need to tighten this. You can see how flat this is. See that? And if I just take and I take the brush, which is basically just has the wax that's left over from the tank or hopper car, and wipe that on. See the difference right there? This is no wax except where my fingers were. This is wax on the brush. Same thing here. And it just comes right in. Now one of the things with this is that this this brush has some wax and some oil on it. So we're getting a little bit darker as we use this brush because it's conveying some of that oil in the dirt that's in the brush. So you want to clean the brush frequently, which I tend to forget to do that. And you can see, if you look at the door here, you can see where I scrubbed off just the highlight of the paint all on the ridges of the door rug, where the door lines are. Um, and the same thing with some of these in here. Now this will all wipe down pretty good with the dry tissue. Wipe that in. So I'm not the trucks. With this, when you are done waxing these, because this is a liquid wax and it doesn't get hard, you want to remove as much of the wax as you can by using the tissues or your or your towels, because the wax will attract dust and cause the dust to stick in it. Just a little more. So that's why you buff it down with your dry cloths. Because otherwise what happens is the car attracts dirt and it sticks to it and then you're back to where you started at after a couple of years of it sitting on the layout. Work that in. shine brush like that square and you can buff them out but with that if you keep the shoe shine brush really clean so there's no wax on it you're just removing the wax that's on the floor. So it's basically this is the car now it's much cleaner than it was. 
it's going to have these greasy fingerprints for a while on it, but you just wipe it down nicely with the dry towel. And that's a really nice looking car now. You just keep wiping it and after a while it'll, it'll stop picking up fingerprints because I have stuff on my fingers too. Shine it up with two out of this group of stuff. Most of the cars that came with these trains were sold to people who restored them and I kept back these two and there was also a tank car which the dome was, the, the tank itself was dented. So I took the tank off and I got just this flat car now. You can see that it was a terracotta tank car. And then I used these tank car frames. I'll find some kind of neat uh, cast iron paperweight and put that on here and it'll make a nice little car for the layout. So it cleaned up all right. Now I could compound this or pick this little bits of paint off, but I don't really think it's worth that. The time and put a little oil in there or, or a little wax on there and just let it sit. And we'll see if that picks off easier later. Because really with this, I'm not sure what kind of load I'm gonna put on the car. So there's really no reason to pick that off until I know that the load won't cover it. All right, so basically with these, these cars are ready to go on the layout. The only thing that's left to do is to take the oil, which is this LaBelle 108 lubricating oil, and put just a drop on each wheel right there at that joint and roll it back and forth on here and it'll work that right in same thing on this one because we know after washing these, these that there's no oil left here just don't want to put so much oil that it rolls down onto the wheel and gets onto the track that's why I rub this back and forth like this and the oil off of the wheel treads if there is any and that's going really well there you, go. And there you have it Two cars that started out filthy mess, and now they're much cleaner, and they'll look great sitting on the layout. Thanks for watching.